Okay, this is a tutorial using uh, Google's Count 3D, not 2D by the way, uh, on a double wishbone suspension for a car or a truck vehicle. There are basically three moving parts, the upper control arm, the wheel and axle assembly, and then also the lower control arm. So I made uh, four 3D printed mechanisms to show the iterations now, the first thing to remember when you're using Gruber's Count 3D is these two very important rules, which were derived by math, by the way, um, but we'll talk about that at a later time. Rule number one is no spin axes are ever parallel. And rule number two, no distances are ever equal between linkages and their mating parts. And this is very crucial uh, to diagnose mechanisms and make sure that Gruber's Count 3D works 100% of the time. So the first uh, double wishbone we want to look at here, we're going to just apply four revolute joints to all four jo uh, locations here. Again, the, the three moving parts, the UCA, upper control arm, the axle, and lower control arm, LCA. And these three add up to a moving parts degrees of freedom of 18. And with four revolute joints, we get a constraint degrees of freedom of 20. So 18 subtract 20 is negative 2. Negative 2 means it's a lock situation, right? Parts are under stress and things are wear over time. So, but I made these spin axes on revolute joints not parallel on purpose, about 10 to 5 degrees off, to show uh, that uh, it's a lock situation here after you build it. Now, let's say I wanted to fix that, and I want my mechanism to freely sus you know, rotate up and down like a suspension should. I replace the upper control arms joints from two revolute joints to an S3, which is spherical, and a U4, which is universal joint. So if you do the math again, uh, we take uh, 18 subtract 17 equals positive 1. And that's good. That means now your mechanism is not locked and it's free to animate. So in this case, um, remember this is going to uh, animate up and down suspension work-wise with none of the spin axes ever being parallel. It shows the power of Googlers because, again, we're solving it using math, basically using physics to solve our mechanism. Now, let's say I wanted to uh, change my mechanism so that the axle of my wheel assembly is steerable. And then, uh, so we swap out some joints. So now the two inner joints will be two revolute joints and the two outer joints being spherical's. And this allows the axle wheel assembly uh, to be steerable. So as you do the Goobers again, we have 18 subtract uh, 16 equals positive 2. Now the mechanism is able to have two system degrees of freedom uh, instead of one, but now we have the axle and wheel assembly being able to rotate and be steerable about the two S3 joints and then also suspend up and down. Now let's say I wanted to now apply torque to my tire and make sure that uh, my, uh, my, my mechanism is not steerable anymore, like for example, a rear suspension. So I just add a link basically. Now that brings the moving parts degree of freedom from 18 to 24. And with two added spherical joints at the end of the links, now we have a constrained degrees of freedom of 22. So 24 subtract 22 is also positive 2. But now we can see that the mechanism can rotate up and down. But also the second motion will be the spin about the link's uh, center longitudinal axis because of two balls, ball joints. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.